Welcome again to the South Knots Amateur Radio Club online foundation training and today we're going to go through the electromagnetic compatibility. So this topic discusses what causes interference, ways to reduce interference, transmission modes, antennas and earths and good station design. So what is EMC? It stands for electromagnetic compatibility and it's the avoidance of interference between two pieces of electronic equipment. Transmitters can cause interference to other equipment such as a neighbour's TV or radio and you need to understand the impact and how to minimise the likelihood of causing un unwanted interference. There's a chance that your signal can cause interference to TV sets or computer monitors, FM, AM and DAB radio which is the digital radio, cordless and fixed line phones, touch lamps, baby monitors, CCTV and various other things. The ability for a piece of equipment to not suffer from interference is known as its immunity. So causes of interference, for example a home sound system. The interference or the signal from your radio system uh, could be picked up by the aerial of the sound system if it's got a radio built in or even the aerial cabling as well the coaxial cable if it's not got good shielding it can be picked up uh, through the cable that goes to the speakers as well because that piece of wire acts like an aerial and will uh, receive uh, signals and also equipment with poor immunity particularly at VHF and UHF frequencies so it could be that it enters through the actual box of the sound system itself if it's not well designed it can even be transmitted through the uh, power cable as well, the mains earth. So there's lots of vulnerabilities to these sy sound systems and uh, TVs etc if they're not designed well or if they're much older and EMC was never a factor in the design in the first place. For digital TV interference, the RF interference to digital TVs will pixelate the picture and cause breakup to sound. It's worse if it's a weak free view signal or using a TV signal booster. And this image here is typical of what you would see a pixelation and broken up sound. Here's an example of the pixelation. And to minimise interference, depending on the problem, you can reduce field strength by moving the transmitting antenna further away. You could reduce the power that you're putting out. The more power you use, the more likely you are to cause interference. You can fit filters or chokes to the antenna and or the pickup cabling at the affected house uh, as close to the affected device as possible. So it will stop your signals from entering the unit. You can use filters on mains power supply leads as well and also address any earth problems. In this sort of situation the filters or the known as chokes are your friend and the more you can use the more you can stop the problem. The filters themselves can come in several different guises. Uh, Clip-on ferrites are common and they're easy and relatively cheap and these just clip over a, a mains cable or a, um, a speaker cable or coax even you can get them in different sizes you can add a high pass or band pass TV filter so this goes into the aerial system of the TV and it will cut out frequencies that are either side of the actual TV frequencies and that can help dramatically you can wind the wire through a ferrite ring as you see on the bottom left there <coughs> and this is extremely effective uh, for cutting out interference and you want to wind it close to the unit itself not at the plug end but near the unit itself the actual sound system for example or TV and also um, some power cables you'll notice these days particularly with newer equipment will have one of those clip-on ferrite type devices built into the power cord itself. As you see on the bottom right there, that little bulge is a ferrite filter that's built into the modern power leads 
to prevent this sort of issue happening in the first place. Testing for interference. Remember that your license requires you to test your equipment from time to time. Using a dummy load will allow you to test whether it's your radiated signal causing interference or the interference is going through connected interface leads or the mains itself. So if you attach this to your radio instead of an antenna and transmit, if the problem stops, you know it's your signal coming out of the aerial that's the issue. If the problem continues when you transmit, the dummy filters then showing you that it's not your transmitted signal that's the issue, it must be getting in another way, perhaps through the mains leads or through some sort of interface lead as well. So it helps you to narrow down how the problem's happening. Modes and EMC. FM causes less interference and you can remember this by thinking of it as friendly modulation, FM, friendly modulation. And this is because FM varies the frequency and not the amplitude of the signal. So this causes less of a problem because it's more consistent. AM and SSB cause more of a problem with interference because the amplitude varies with the signal and therefore this sort of pulsing effect you see on the diagram there in the middle uh, is what's causing the interference to be more uh, obvious. Morse code and CW, or the same thing, Morse code is, is effectively CW. CW is the mode, Morse is the actual uh, language if you like. This can cause key clicks and this can be a problem uh, if the on to off is not smooth. So if you look at the bottom data signal there, see how it's very sharp edges, it's square on and off. Uh, that can cause clicking and uh, in most modern equipment this is sorted out anyway but by rounding those edges that can stop this clicking noise that people can hear through their TV or sound system because those sharp edges are rounded off in the signal and therefore it's not causing as much uh, of a, a noise to be heard on, on the uh, problematic equipment. The same sort of thing applies to data as well. Uh, although data is normally constant modulation, so it tends to be less of a problem than speech uh, on AM or SSB. RF Earth. Use an RF Earth to minimise RF currents leaking into mains and interfering with other mains powered equipment. Do not use the mains Earth for RF. Do not use radiators or water pipes to connect to for Earth. Use a copper stake in the ground close to your shack. <coughs> and when you're connecting this, use heavy gauge wire to connect from transmitter or from the antenna matching unit. Rather than going into a lot of explanation here, I would recommend just remembering those key points uh, at this stage. That will be perfectly adequate for your exam. So not using mains earth for RF, it needs its own separate earth. Do not connect it to anything in the house like radiators or water pipes. They are not a good place to earth something. Use a copper stake, which is good, good for conduction, uh, conductivity. Uh, and you want it in the ground close to the shack, so it's only a short wire needed to get to the uh, copper stake. And you want to use heavy gauge thick wire, which is low resistance uh, or low impedance in this case, uh, to connect from the transmitter or matching unit to the stake. Antennas and EMC. A dipole is commonly used for HF. This is a balanced antenna as we've heard before. Connected to the transmitter or ATU using unbalanced coaxial cable. And we're using a ballon which allows the unbalanced coax to match to the balanced dipole. The shield of the coax is connected to the RF earth. Station design. Whenever you're connecting equipment together, you need to look for good quality cables and connectors. Cheap connectors and cable will cause you nothing but problems and as a long-term 
method, it actually costs you more money in keep replacing them and fiddling, trying to get the problems to go away. So good quality cables and connectors are a worthwhile investment. Having a good RF earth, meaning a good connection to earth, is valuable in causing uh, or avoiding causing interference. And you want to use mains and RF filters to prevent any signal going into the mains and affecting any other property, your own property or others that are on the same system. This is a good station setup. As you can see there, mains filtering, RF filtering, a good RF earth, a balanced antenna. This is a good station setup. Antenna positioning. In an ideal world, consider setting up your antenna as far away from houses and other antennas as possible and as high as possible. For HF, a balanced antenna, ideally a horizontal dipole, will generate far less interference than any other types and generally with this type of setup you won't cause any interference at all. Clearly most people don't have a huge field uh, as a back garden so as far away from the house as possible and as high as possible for your particular location uh, might be compromised however do the best you can with the space that you've got. Here's an example of a balanced antenna setup so we have the HF antenna sighted away from the house and TV antenna so there's a good distance away from anything that might be susceptible to interference. We've used good quality coax and we've used an RF earth right next to the shack so it's only a short distance for the RF to travel. Here's an example of an end fed setup as well. So this is an unbalanced system. We've fed it from the end of the garden rather than right at the house. So any signals at the feed point are nowhere near the house. And the RF earth is again close to the shack, which is ideal. This is a, another good setup. Here's an example of a poor setup. It's fed from the upstairs shack, which means that we can't run an RF earth because we're on the first floor up. And it's fed from the house end, which means that the feed point uh, is close to the house and that can cause interference. Not only that though, the feed point is close to the aerial on top of the roof of the house which is for the TV. So this is a pretty poor setup and it's likely that we will be causing interference. If you're looking to set something up in your own property then please ask advice from your tutor who can help you on a good uh, reliable setup for your own property. Uh, not just about the exam, but this is a good skill to have for setting up your own system. EMC and neighbours. To avoid disputes, it pays to be helpful, diplomatic and cooperative. <clears throat> Conduct a few basic tests in cooperation with your neighbour to see if it is in fact you that's causing the interference. Most problems can be resolved easily and cheaply usually with these filters and ferrites. Your neighbour may consult Ofcom, for which there is a fee that Ofcom will charge your neighbour, and they may visit to test your equipment if it goes that far. Again, this is at your neighbour's expense, and provided you've followed these simple rules, you won't be at fault, <coughs> and uh, you won't incur any ex uh, expense. You can, just as an aside here, you can obviously speak to other members of your club for help if you do feel that you might be interfering with somebody and get assistance from your club. You can also contact the RSGB if you're a member, which I highly recommend, and they have a department that deals with this regularly and they can give advice as well, free advice. So don't worry about this sort of thing. And if you do find yourself uh, having complaints by a neighbour, um, do look to... Uh, be helpful, diplomatic and cooperative with them and do seek assistance to help you resolve the problem. It may not be you causing the interference, um, so again don't worry, there are ways to solve this without it escalating to a, a big problem. EMC logging. Keeping a log is extremely helpful. 
If a neighbour claims you're causing interference, ask them to log when it occurs, what time, which day, etc. and how it occurs, is it making the TV pixelate, etc. and see if it matches your transmission log. So if and when this happens, ask them to keep a log, you keep a log, and then after a week or two you can pair logs and see if their complaints coincide with your operation. If it doesn't, it's nothing to do with you. If it does, then this is when help is needed. Note, if Ofcom get involved, they may ask you and your neighbour to keep a log anyway uh, to confirm interferences related to your transmissions. Before it gets that far, I suggest you doing this automatically yourself so that it, it doesn't need to escalate to Ofcom. And again, do remember your members of your club, your tutor, and even the RSGB are there to support you and help you fix it if there is a problem, in fact, with your equipment. EMC in cars. Care is needed when using a transmitter in a car. Professional advice should be sought for all vehicle installations. The vehicle owner is responsible for ensuring that any radio installation is compatible with the vehicle's electrical and management systems and does not affect vehicle safety. You may need to inform your vehicle insurers that the vehicle has been modified. Any tests following mobile radio equipment installation should be done whilst stationary and with all vehicle electronic systems operating before any on-road tests are carried out. Note, vehicle ignition and battery charging systems can cause electrical interference to reception on mobile radio equipment. EMC advice. Advice on reducing interference and antenna setup is available from numerous sources, including the RSGB online, uh, and in various antenna books, and from local radio clubs. The RSGB offers a range of free EMC leaflets, some of which are designed to be given to neighbours. Advice is available from the RSGB EMC committee via the RSGB website. Search EMC at www.rsgb.org So in summary, EMC is the electromagnetic compatibility you need to understand the symptoms and causes that we've gone through. Understand the need for a good RF earth. Use the right type of antenna and good quality cable. Understand correct station and shack setup. Remember that FM is the friendly mode if you like, uh, and it's more friendly than other modes such as AM and SSB. And you'll find that most VHF, UHF radios are actually FM radios, mainly for that reason as well. Understand the type and correct use of filters. Take care with in-car amateur radio installations. Make sure you're not uh, causing a problem with the systems in the car that may make it unsafe. And also resolving problems, keep a log, get your neighbour to keep a log, and get advice from the RSGB and or local club. If you have any questions on any of these or would like more clarity, please consult your tutor and they'll be happy to help.